Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mushtack, and today we are going to figure out how the American Legion's Mathematics League works. So basically, um, I do videos about the main association of math leagues a lot, and if you do really well, um, they'll take the top 36 people or something like that to this competition. And, yeah. So how does this really work? Oh, first of all, um, it's a team of 15 people, so if you go here. Yeah, so a team will consist of 15 members, and then if you have, like, multiple teams, then you have, like, A1, Team A1, Team B1, like, there are, there are different divisions. I'm not exactly sure how these divisions work. I don't really care. I, I just do math. So, uh, you have to be in high school to do this. Like, high school or middle school, or elementary school, if you want to. But, it, usually high school people. And, yeah, so, like, your Division A team is supposed to be the best, and then your Division B team is not as good. And that's how that's how the divisions work, basically. Um, you know calculators. No calculators at all. And then, the, here are the, like, the rounds. There's individual round, which is, like, you have two problems at a time, and then you have ten minutes to do, the, do those two problems. It's like how in Mammal, you have twelve minutes to do three problems. It's like that, except instead of six rounds, there's five... Oh, yeah, in Mammal, there's also five individual lines. So, in Mammal, there's five individual lines, and Omal, there's five individual lines. But instead of three problems, it's two problems. So, each problem is worth one point, so you can get a total of ten points in the individual lines. But there's 15 people on team, so it's 150 points per team. Then, there's a team round, which is ten questions. You have... Oh, for the team round, you have 20 minutes to answer 10 problems. And that's worth 50 minutes, 50 points, because there's 5 points per problem. In the relay, so you have 6 minutes to do 3 problems, so you, there's like 3... So the relay, they like... You have 15 people in team, but you break it up into 5 groups of 3. And then, the, each person in that group of 3 gets a different problem. And it's kind of like the mammal relays in the state ground. So, like, the first person does their problem, and then they pass the answer back. And then the second person does their problem, and then the, the, they pass the answer back, and the third person does their problem. And if you complete the um, correct answer in 3 minutes, you get 5 points. If you complete the correct answer in 6 minutes, you get 3 points. However, um, if I'm correct... Yeah, you can only hand in an answer at 3 minutes and 6 minutes, and I do they don't tell you if you got the answer right at 3 minutes. So, you might be unsure, but you should definitely not uh, pass in the same answer twice, because if you pass in the same answer twice, and it turns out to be correct, then you'll get 3 points instead of 5 points. So, if you're quite confident about your answer, then pass it in at 3, and then don't pass it in again. If you're not confident about your answer, and it, actually you know you made a mistake, then pass it in again. Because if your answer is wrong, then you get zero points. So yeah, you, the goal is to f f somehow solve three problems in three minutes with three people. But if you can't do that, then you have to do it in six minutes, which is two less points. So because there's five groups of three, each group gets five, so that's 25 points for one relay, but there are actually two relay rounds. So that's 25 plus 25, that's another 50 points. And then there's this thing called the power round, which is basically, you have one hour, and I guess you all work together, and you do this proof, which is like, I'll show you in this comp, I'll show you, but it's like really big. So yeah, and then there's also a tiebreaker round, I don't know how the tiebreaker round works. Yeah, there's a tiebreaker, and then there's like the super relay, where um you have a group of seven people, and then you have another group of seven people, and then you have a 15th member. So the group of seven people get one answer, the group of is, is the second group of seven people get another answer, and then they give both answers to the 15th people, they do, they do their problem based off of those answers, and then they have to solve given a problem. The super AI is worth exactly zero points. Apparently, it's just supposed to be like, they're waiting for the scores to come in, which takes a while. So instead of just waiting, they do this super relay thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't... Yeah, th that sounds interesting. So, yeah. So that's basically how OMOL works. Uh, if I forgot anything, please put it in the comments. You can... Uh, I don't know. Oh, you can only put in one solution to the problem. Question. That's interesting. No cheating. So, yeah. Th they have, like, really in-depth rules and how everything works. I'm not quite sure how everything works. But... 
So yeah. So that's OMO. And then I just want to take a look at some of the problems from 2014. These are the problems from 2015. 2014. These are the, like the team run problems. So as you can see, number theory, coding geometry, geom coding geometry. I think, I guess that's series and sequences. Uh, systems of equations with logarithms. So yeah, they combine a lot of stuff. Uh, trig. This is actually really easy if you know the trick. This is, I haven't done this problem, but I know the trick to it. it, it you should do that problem sometime. It's it's very fun. Um, I might do that problem. I don't know. Uh, another code in geometry problem. Area problem. The arithmetic sequence. Uh, oh, a lattice point. If you ever see a lattice point when you do these problems, that means a point that has all integer coordinates. That also comes up in YAML. Uh, YAML is another math competition in New England. So, yeah, if you see lattice point, that just means all integers. And then they also have all of the solutions to all of these problems, which is really helpful. This is the power question. So as you can see, this is like, I'm a competitive programmer. This has a lot of directions. It's a very big word problem. This is very similar to um, competitive programming, I think. And I think a lot of the logic in competitive programming really helps here. And then, so yeah, if you're a competitive programmer, I think this will be really interesting. I thought it was really interesting. So basically you have like a population. Each person knows how to make two dishes. And there's like a set of dishes. And the town is called full. If there's like one resident that can make two dishes, so you have to find the population of a full town with d dishes. And I, so, yeah, I think so. Basically, it, it's the number of ways you can pick two dishes from d dishes. So what's that? So yeah, so that's like the easy part. Um, and then if you take one dish out, and then you take all of the people that can do not that dish, it's still a full town, which is pretty interesting. That's pretty easy to prove. So you have to be good at proofs. I think I think you do proofs in pre-calc. So yeah. Um, and then you have to like, you have to group people based off if they don't have the same dish. So you group, you make groups of people the, um, base, and each person in that group knows how to make different dishes. So no two people in one group can know how to make the same dish. So you have to find the least number of groups of a town. And th oh, they also give you example towns, which are not necessarily full. And you have to f basically find, I guess, a formula for if you have a full town with D dishes, then what is the least number of groups you can make with people that don't know how to make the same dish? And first you have to prove that it's non-decreasing sequence. And then I did not actually read all of this stuff. But, but basically, it gets comp increasingly complex with more definitions, like you have D-dish, you have homogeneous, you have resident cycle. Yeah, and then at the end, they show you the formulas for... Um, they show you the formula for the, the least number of groups if for a full town, and then you have to prove those formulas work. So what I, I think... I, I didn't read um, anywhere between 5 and... Uh, 12, but I think if you look through the whole packet first and you read everything first, then it, it, without trying to do all of the proofs, except for like maybe the beginning proofs, so it's really easy, um, I think it can give you intuition because if you know the formula from 13a and 13b, that gives you intuition for how it can be a non-decreasing sequence, which you can, you can prove for 4 So I think a lot of these problems are built to build up intuition. And they're very interesting. So it's kind of like a series of related proofs. Which I just I just really like this. I I mean I, I read a lot of abstract algebra and linear algebra a lot because th that's what I've been doing over the past few months. So I know proofs kind of. And I I just thought that this was like the most interesting out of all of this. And then these are the solutions. Oh, individual problems. Uh, by the way, I have no idea what order these come in. I do not know if this is the actual contest order. I don't know anything. I have never actually been to a competition. I, this is my first year. I'm making this video mostly for myself to figure out how this works. Yeah. Um, this is individual. I think this would be like kind of number theory, arithmetic. This would be probability. This would be, I don't know, combinatorics. Trig sequences or slash number theory. 
number theory. There's a lot of number theory here. <laughs> Check. Geometry. I like number theory. I don't know. This is gonna be a good competition. Uh, community talks. Bases. Number theory. Like, I think that's number theory. And then you have solutions. And then you have relay. Okay. So there's only two relays. Um, as opposed to in Mammal, there's two relays. But you have, like, two sets of different problems. So that teams can't cheat off each other. So, yeah. So, like, there will be, like... It's, so, it's not like that in this. Basically. They, they only have two sets of problems instead of four sets of problems. Uh, co uh, oh, so the first relay seems to be coding geometry, and the second relay seems to be more number theory, slash combinatorics, slash series and sequences. I just gonna call all this number theory. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot that goes on in here. I haven't done these problems. Oh, and then the super relay. So, the super relay is just all over the place. I don't even know what's happening right now. That's nice. Chug. Number th all All of the things. Algebra. Logs, let, 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 all of it. Okay, complex numbers. That, this is that's nice. Okay, and then tiebreaker problems. These are interesting. So, I thought this problem was particularly hard. I, I obviously there's a lot of hard problems in here. I have no idea how anyone would ever do this problem. Pe by hand, because there's no calculators allowed at all. So you they basically they inserted six extra digits into these digits. You have to find what those six extra digits are. They could be the first six digits, they could be the last six digits, or they could just be a random assortment of six digits. And you, all you're given the in, the only information you're given is that it's in the form of one over n. So that sounds very hard. Good luck. Um. Well, actually, I'll, there's one way you could do that. Since you have six digits, you know that there's four digits left, so you know that. It has to be some kind of division of nine, 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 which is that's that, that's the pattern for four digit repeating decimal places. And then there's a zero in front, so you know that it's divided by ten, so it's zero. So the n has to be a division of nine, 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 zero. That's still pretty hood, though. I don't know. And then this is number theory. Th this seems pretty easy. And th you have like problem one so hard, and then problem I don't know. I don't know if there's an early in order to this. So yeah. That was interesting. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed looking through all of these problems. I will probably do some problems. Instead of doing the mammal problems all of the time, since this is coming up. So Oimel is on June 3rd and June 4th. So yeah. Uh, most if you, if you don't know if you qualified for Oimel, you, you, you probably haven't. It, just in case you were wondering. Um, because they contacted everyone at the seed meet. And these are the top 36 people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Uh, that's it for this video. I'll probably do an OMO problem. Or a geometry problem next week. And have fun doing your math.